If this is March 28th, this is the 57th show of the Ask, Ask Julius show here in Expansion Network. This is Angel Rivo again every single Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. As you see, we are a little bit early today, but thank you everyone who's already early with us as well from here, from Dallas, Texas. And we have obviously Casey Joe, who's channeling us every single Thursday, Julius and his group of entities. Hi, Jay Casey. How are you? Fantastic. Hi, hope you're, we hope everybody out there is great in TV land, right? <laughs> <laughs> On TV land, exactly. We have to apologize because some of you probably will have tried, when you see this uh, video, you will have tried to go to uh, Expansion Network uh, channel on YouTube so that you know, guess what? We had what we call community guidelines strike, a strike on community guidelines, which means that they didn't quite abide <laughs> by what we said, what, whatever. So it is what it is. So, you know, we're still happy. We just apologize because we know we have an audience on that channel and there's always people every single week that come to, you know, the channel of Expansion Network on YouTube. And today it's unfortunately not possible to watch the show. But anyway, we, we just have to wait, as we always do, a certain period of time when the lords, the lords of YouTube decide we will be allowed to stream again and meanwhile we have lovely Andreline, lovely Andreline, and we have Stacy Savage here saying hey hey hi how are you nice to have you here let me do this there, there we go there we it's go. it's the lords of offensiveness right we, we, <laughs> we know we're doing good things when we're offending the so uh, well, exactly. There's always, you know, a few things that people don't like that either we say or someone says. And obviously, all your questions are more than welcome. And regardless of the questions that you ask, we will always be here for you. All right. So we're going to start the show again. Expansion Network, accelerating the consciousness of humanity. And remember, actually, I also have to apologize because last time we all we were here, we said that the next show was going to be on the 21st of March, but eventually it was on the 28th. So I apologize because it was my mistake. But the good news is, moving forward, every single week, there will be a show. So here we are. Uh, okay, so uh, who else is here? Lori. Lori is here as well. Hello, everyone. Hello, Lori. Nice to have you here. And then someone pretending to be a spend with Julius. Uh, on YouTube, which is probably our production team and probably... Is that with the wonderful Sue Dolan who's saying hello, everyone? If, uh, if we are here, thank you so much. And again, I'm going to become small because, as you like, I become small and then we start asking questions. So, everybody who is online right now with us, that you can ask questions. And also, we're going to go back to our list of questions, the long list of questions that we have from a while ago. Okay, and we'll try to go to those questions and start asking them. Okay, so again, remember. All of you that want to ask questions, we are here for you. All right. So the first question comes from Hilda B. And her, this is her question. There is a technology of forming an invisible protective shields with nanoengineered particles that repel natural disasters using electromagnetic forces. The question is, what are the risks of this technology, Julius? Mm -hmm. Uh, well, you have to understand, Master, that any time you throw a field of energy up, you're going to have consequences to it. You're going to have consequences to it. You cannot full throw 
a field of electromagnetic currents out into what one would perceive to be a natural or organic environment without repercussions. There's always going to be a reaction back from the natural fields of energies. So here's what we say. You do not have massive, massive, destructive, natural disasters. They are all caused by technology, by harp, by weather manipulation. Your Earthship in its natural state does, of course, shift and move. Of course, there are weather patterns. Of course, there are energetic patterns to the Earthship. But what you think have been natural disasters have not been. They have not been. You have been manipulated by harp for hundreds of years, hundreds of years, okay? And anytime that happens, the earth fight fights back. So you have to understand, according to quantum physics, anything that projects out into the field is going to affect the field, and the field itself, if live and sovereign, is going to react or respond to that which is thrown at it. So what really needs to take place is all of the technology that is used to manipulate your environmental conditions, your weather patterns, needs to stop. It needs to stop. And then the Earthship will find her beautiful equilibrium and her balance. And the spaces and places on your Earthship that you think have extreme severe weather. Well, what if we told you that that's not natural either? What if we told you that your deserts aren't supposed to be deserts? What if we told you that a lot of the, you know, unlivable environmental conditions are made that way to hide something or protect something that they don't want you around? So we aren't a big fan of you messing with your environment one way or the other. Um, all of that is, is a big narrative that your natural environment or that the earthship is very destructive to itself. And we don't agree with that. Exactly. We don't agree with that. We only agree with the truth. Thank you so much, Julius. Let's go to the next question. We already have this amazing chat with lots of questions. We can't stop it. Thank you, lovely Andrelin. And by the way, welcome back, Marianne Geddes. Nice to have you here. All right, so the lovely Andrelin question is, where is the real ancient ancient Egypt? Egypt. So um, your mapping system, it depends on which one you're talking about, Master. So there are, there are civilizations layered on top of each other. They're layered on top of each other. And all you've done or all that has the the people that control and manipulate have done is just renamed they just renamed continents okay and they it's like a it's like a shuffleboard right let's name this over here and let's name this over here and, and let's keep everybody confused and and let's let's screw around with this and that so we aren't sure what you're speaking of when you say ancient egypt okay because they are layered and layered and layered on top of each other. If you are asking us if Egypt is in the continent of what you now know to be Africa, well, that's a question because people will say that the US is actually Africa, which would mean that Egypt, if it's placed in Africa, would be placed in the US somewhere. So you guys are all playing around with names and, and things like that. So um, it depends on who you're referencing what civilization, what stage and phase of civilization, and who you're relying on to name your continents, okay? So we understand the theory that the cabal or the nefarious energies have renamed continents and shuffled things around. That is a truth. But when they did that, they renamed everything. So if you are wondering where the pyramids are in relationship to Egypt, well, the ones that are currently in the continent of Africa certainly have those there. Are there pyramids hidden in the U.S.? Yeah, they're in Shasta. They are in the mountain regions and they are inverted. So you guys have just, once again, you guys play a game of shuffling cards, okay? And then for some reason, you struggle and fight 
over truth of naming. It's just been a name shift game, Masters. That's what we will tell you. Most of your history is incorrect. Almost all of it is incorrect. And it's mostly all been written to keep you separated, confused, and not knowing that you are source. And so that's what we will say is currently going on. Some people are naming the U.S. as Africa, which would put Egypt somewhere in the U.S. We could agree with that, but that's not the right name. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you so much. By the way, before we we go ahead and we continue with the, so many questions, we'll already have three or four questions live. I wanted to ask you something because, you know, we always, always talk about these promos, these re retreats, all those things that you do, but you, you, we never talk about them after the fact. So why don't you tell us about, you know, because there was a retreat organized recently and we don't know how it went. Why don't oh. you share that with the audience? So, we, you know, we thank you, Angel. We had a fantastic retreat this weekend. It was in Salt Lake. Um, it was a new thing with these krypton kryptonic vaults where we're able to remove three extraordinary vaults of limitation resistance coding. Um, there was some spell casting, things going on for everybody that was there. Um, it was amazing. It was a totally different energy for me given uh, my new space of Julius and my new energy frequencies that are coming through uh, since the beginning of this year. So I was a little bit scared, but my team is amazing. It went so smooth, so smooth and easy and absolutely crazy with energy. So thank you. Thank you for asking. It was, it was kind of a milestone for me, as you know, um, I am now doing Julius without um, the person that I was doing Julius with before. And so this is my first one, kind of solo. I was a little nervous, uh, but it went fantastic. So thank you for asking. Absolutely. And also I'm getting ready to show also some promos that we have for the upcoming, upcoming month of uh, April. But we are not going to reveal that yet. It's going to happen later in the show because we have so, so many questions to answer. So all right by the way if you want to send questions offline because you don't want to do it live remember send them to support at expandwithjulius.com and they will be answered in the upcoming shows we're already in the 57th show it's crazy 57th show already wow you know thank you so much for everybody that has been with us for so long and has been you know asking those questions and helping everybody else to accelerate the consciousness of humanity which is what you know expand with julius and uh, excuse me expansion network and expand with julius are all about all right so let's go to the next question that comes from maria geddes all right marian marian excuse me mary ann geddes my apologies marianne it was misreading your name by the way your last name it sounds like i have a few friends who have similar names in uh, last names in uh, portugal and in brazil but i'm just just guessing here anyway can Julius comment on the so-called artificial metatronic flower of life as opposed to the original crystal spiral? Mm. That's quite a question. Mm. Yeah, they are they're measurements of resonance. They're measurements of resonance and frequency. And that is a truth. That is a truth. Uh, we are not sure exactly what it is that you want us to comment on. Um, there are many ways to measure resonance and frequency. And, but usually what we can say is that they have an alignment with certain patterned configurations within the physical embodiment. Um, everything here on the earth ship and everything in physical has a connection and that is energy and that is energy and frequency. So everything is energy masters everything is frequency and anything that is solid quote unquote solid or has a materialistic form is energy frequency slowed down to different hertz range and different resonance and these different patterns can measure that now your hertz range uh, frequencies have different benefits for you some are used for health some are used for healing some are used for uh, reconfiguration. Some are used for teletransportation. Some are used for consciousness coding. Some are used for straight 
you know, communication between you and yourself across the galaxies and the stars. And some are messages and some are mapping systems from um, aspects of yourself back to you to help you awaken you on your conscious journey because you've placed yourself through amnesia coming back through the reincarnated state. All right, that was quite an answer for sure. Let me go to the next question. Thank you so much, Marianne. And then Daylene is here. Thank you very much for being here, Daylene. And hi, everyone. Happy to be here with you all. We are also very happy. It's the fall of the cabal, a fairly accurate documentary. Is and is Janet Osbard still alive? Haven't, haven't watched it. Um, the fall of the cabal has pretty good information to it. It does not have all the information to it. It has a fair amount of, of good information to it. Um, we think that it is valuable information for people to get a beginning sense of what has taken place here on the Earthship. It does not go into the fully expanded truth. Um, it does not go into a lot of different things. It doesn't go into the child trafficking. It doesn't go into the reptilian aspect. It doesn't go into a lot of things, but it is a pretty good beginner informant information. Um, the person that you are asking about has been uh, hidden away. In, in a protective area. That's what we will say about that. All right, fair enough. Thank you so much, Daniel, for the question. And thank you, Julius, for the answer. Let's go to the next question by Ursula Baker. Hi, Ursula. Nice to have you here again. There are many pyramids in Illinois near the New Madrid Fault, wondering if they were built on a solar eclipse route. Hmm. We say most of the pyramids are in star cluster uh, patterns and alignments. They are used for as a mapping system and a teletransportation system, and they're also used as a power system. So most of the pyramids um, are, are that type of system, but they are also calibrations and calculations. So you are only aware of and familiar with the ones that are, are extroverted but there are inverted pyramids as well. So, and you, you are not aware of those. And so as many as there are on the surface pointing upwards, there are those that are pointing down as well. There are pyramids that point in, in mountain regions, and there are pyramids that point out. Some of them make up what's known as macabas, macabas. And so sometimes the pyramids have other smaller pyramids in them that create um, a vortex or an atom effect. Um, and so they are, they're teleportals on your Earthship as well. Awesome. Thank you so much, Julius. And thank you, Ursula, for the question. So this one has already been asked. By the way, I wanted to say we identified a little bit of... Uh, pick up, let's say, like for two or three seconds every five minutes or so. Actually, your sound, your audio, like, stops. Again, only two or three seconds every few minutes. So it's not it's, it's, it's not that it's a big issue. But anyway, I just wanted to, to let you know, Casey, and also wanted to let the audience know it's nothing. You know, as you know, we always try to do as, you know, our best with technology. But sometimes, you know, these things happen for multiple reasons. The same reason that, unfortunately, and we are seeing the numbers of the audience. Unfortunately, a lot of people follow us through the Expansion Network channel on YouTube, which was blocked, which was temporarily canceled by the lords of the untruth. Let me put it this way. Okay. So they were, they, unfortunately, we were blocked. They said that we had breached some sort of uh, guidelines and they gave us a strike. Okay. But anyway, it doesn't matter. We are still here. And obviously, we will always be here with you and we fully accept whatever is happening because this is what's going on in the world. And Sony is here. Sony, I haven't seen you in a while. Sony Dean is here. Hi, beautiful souls. He loves Julius. 
You often mention the plasma light. How can we use it in our life? Thank you. That's Sony's question. Plasma is the life force. It is the quantum life force that comes into this realm and all the way through your bodies, masters. It is a healing life force. It is a magical, magical force for enlightenment. It is a magical, magical force for healers to use and access uh, on other people. So it is a quantum energy that you are coded with. It is all inside your sacrum fluid and it is in your bloodstream actually runs through your nervous systems as well. You can access plasma light through sun gazing, moon gazing and breath work. Okay. And um, that will literally help you draw in that plasma light energy. But plasma isn't just in light form. It's not just in light form. It is the quantum energy field that you are saturated with all around you. Um, grounding techniques help to activate plasma in your body and also um, sleep and meditation. So plasma is teletransported through your body, through your nervous system. So it's important for you to keep your nervous system healthy and resilient. And it's a huge part of, it's a huge part of, of your fluid system in your body, but it is the quantum energy from the galaxy that you reside in. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sony, for the question. All right, let's continue. We have a question offline from our offline list of questions from we are only this together. Again, we apologize for all of those, all of you who connect through the expansion network YouTube channel, because unfortunately we cannot live stream. But anyway, thank you for coming to other sources of live streaming that we have. As you know, we are on Facebook and YouTube, also with the Ask Julius Show social media outlets. Let's go to this question from we are all in this together. Is the moon shrinking? Will it go away when we ascend? Those are uh, we are all in this together questions. Uh no, we we don't we don't find that to be true. We're not sure what you mean by having it go away when you are sent ascend, you are not changing the third dimensional realm into another dimensional aspect. The moon that you are seeing is interrelated to the third dimension. There are different moons as well as uh, planetary patterns for each dimension, but your ascension is not about changing the dimensional density of the third dimension. So it's like you asking us if the trees are going to go away or if the mountains are going to go away or if the sun is going to go away. So we don't believe that your information is in alignment with what you speak. Um, we can tell you that as you grow in your consciousness, which is what your ascension is about, things here are very different. You can see more things. You will be able to see things with more clarity, but we do not support that your organic moon is shrinking. It expands and contracts just like your planet does, just like all of the other things in your solar system. Fair enough. Thank you so much. And let's go to the next question that comes from the one and only Stacy Savage. She's always like right here. Even, even if we connect like 15 minutes before the scheduled hour, she's always here. Thank you so much, Stacey, for being always with us. And that's her question. One night this week, I was visited, that means a few weeks ago, she was visited by red blue lights that tried to energetically assault her. I intuitively, she says, stood my ground and commanded them to leave and go back to the light. I've never, I have never had encounter, an encounter like this before. Can Julius provide insight, please? Mm, well, we think that you are being assaulted by a lot of the energy frequencies that they're putting out. Uh, they are very low frequency and they're very nefarious. So good for you. Everybody can stand up and resist low frequency. And you certainly can do it from different beings um, and different species that may be coming into your space and bothering you. They come in, it's, it's like they live in the law of if you don't say no, you say yes. So we always say, say no. You are a sovereign being. You are source energy. You certainly have the right to either invite that in 
or to certainly not accept their invitation to end or invasion to come into your space. So thank you for doing that, Master. After you do something like that, always raise everything to the highest frequency of love, yourself, and also your intention for whatever being was trying to assault you or be harmful for you, that they find their way into a higher frequency as well. Awesome. Thank you so much. And Stacy saying thank you so much and sending us love, sending so much love. It's a pleasure. We have another question from Marianne, but, or Marianne, but we're going to talk about this surprise. Actually, I put up already the QR code that people already started, by the way, you know, uh, taking a picture of the QR code, scanning it so they can already know what the offer, what the promo, what the special product service for the month of April. And obviously, as I typically do, what I'm going to do myself you know, it's going to be to show exactly what's what's the special for April. And here it is, the levels of consciousness expanded. Oh, okay. gosh. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to read this. Okay. So this is a five, five, five part workshop for April. There will be four teaching modules. Oh, my God. And one question and answer module where all participants can send in their questions about the teachings for Julius. Live workshop is April 14 through 17, and the Q&A is April 19th, all at 6 p.m. Mountain Time U.S., okay? Replays are available immediately after the modules. The human physical experience is about you as source energy, knowing thought through the physical realm of on the Earthship. You created dimensions and realms and platforms of different energies to be able to demonstrate many different ways to process thought and emotion. And something I'm going to do because I'm so tempted to place, you know, to <laughs> click here. Um, so I'm going to do it, all right? So I'm going to stay silent and see what this wonderful being here is going to tell us right now. Okay, so fingers crossed. We've never done this before. Let's do it. Drums rolling. Okay. Oh my God. Oh no. Why not? Okay. So let me see why we don't hear right now the audio from this wonderful video. Let me go to the system sound of this amazing computer. Okay. So I think I, think, I guess we have to we have to change this. No. We have to change the source. Hold on a second. I want this to work as much as you do. No, we can't hear this. All right. So what else? Can you hear it now? I can't hear it. You cannot? No. Could you hear it before or not? No. Okay. So I don't know for some reason, but you can hear me, right? You you can definitely Absolutely. Hear me. Absolutely. So you have not been able to hear anything, although I've ch I'm changing the... I'm changing the different sources of audio here. Okay, let me see. Let me try again and see if you, you don't hear anything. No? No. No? No, nothing? No, can't, see, can't seem to hear it come through your screen. Like a third-party screen doesn't seem to be, the audio doesn't seem to be able to pick it up. Yeah, yeah. So the, the audio, actually this audio source has, has, Maybe I don't have a sound attached to this source, but hold on, let me see if I can do anything else. Well, anyway, it's a beautiful message, obviously, from this beautiful being called Casey Joe. All right, so let me let me make sure. Anyway, so I, uh, let's go to the real Casey Joe, who is here with us. Okay, so uh, what would you like to share about this uh, absolute amazing experience? Yeah, so when we very first when we first launched Julius years ago, Angel. Um, the very, very first presentation really that we put out as a channeled information package from Joyous were the levels of consciousness, seven levels of consciousness. And they've really been a massively valuable baseline teaching on the human experience. 
Um, and every few years, Julius kind of did an upgraded version, kind of a little more information, a little more expanded information, because, of course, as we all know, all truth is and all things expand themselves. And we've been talking for a while for the last few years about yet again up leveling um, this information on for everybody. And we're finally doing it, finally doing it. So this. This teaching is, is one of our favorite teachings. Again, what you believe in, this information, you're just going to go, wow, okay? We've, we've sold many versions of it over the years, but this is going to be the updated version. In fact, all the other versions are coming off of the website. So we are restructuring everything, putting out all kinds of new information, and this is, this is the one we really, really, really wanted to tackle. Um, this is going to give you so much information about you and where you are on your conscious journey, how to get to the next level of consciousness. It's going to help all of you understand the people in your life, your family members, your work people. You're just going to be like, wow. OK, and it's just going to take you to an extraordinary space of understanding and we can move, we can shift and we can change. So if you have the mindset, come and visit us for this teaching. Now, normally we do two separate teachings each month. This is going to be the only singular teaching. We're putting this all together in that five day span. So this is going to be your class and your course for the month of April. And it's just going to be amazing, 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 amazing. If you think you already know everything about the seven levels of consciousness, you don't. We're going to get out there and we're going to expand there. We're going to talk about probably some of the energy frequency bandwidths as well, the, the energy bodies, and who knows what Julius is going to bring forward for everyone. All right. Can you hear me? Can you hear me, uh, Casey? I can, but your screen is frozen to me. Exactly. So your screen is frozen to me too. So what I'm going to do, and I apologize, I have no idea why everything is frozen here, but at least you can hear me. So we are probably like audio only here. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to close those browsers and get back in. So if you want to, please, if you were so kind, maybe what I can do, I can ask you another question before I go. Can you still hear me? I can. Okay, good. So I'm going to just ask the next question. Okay. And uh, I'm going to go, I'm going to probably leave uh, the, the restream, live stream, and I'm going to be back in a few, hopefully, under a minute, okay? I'm going to re restart my machine. So Stacy says, which is the next question, is one night, no, hold on, not this. It's, we're all in this together, right? My, my apologies. So will we ever meet our hybrid children on Earth? That's a question from we are all in this together. Mm, well, we're not quite sure if you mean as if they're being held away from you and will be reintroduced to you. Um, or if you're just wondering if you're going to be able to openly make that connection so that you can have recognition of each other. When you raise your frequencies, masters, you open up the corridors and blocked gateways to connection and communication, not only to each other, but which are you. So it really helps to open up the field of unity consciousness. And so just through thoughts and intentions, people will be drawn to each other. And your level of awareness has been so bound and limited that you truly have lived within the space of singular and separate. And so when consciousness raises itself, the singular and separate experience will not dissolve away, but will transcend itself into unity consciousness. So um, that is part of the experience. If you are asking if they have been, you know, physically held back from you and will like show up at your front door, that happening, we really see that the connection corridors are going to be made open and available to you. And also the connection corridors from the different timeline separations and also even the different dimensional space um, limitations. So if they stop blocking those things with frequency, a lot of those things are going to start finding their way open for you. You already have some of those experiences in what you perceive to be your dream state. 
okay, where your soul particle body and is able to um, slide into these other connective communicative spaces. Some people already communicate with people um, in the astral plane and in the etheric realm with people who are already here, but maybe physically separate from each other. You know, they will visit each other at night in the etheric realm or in the astral plane, full on have a conversation, full on find resolution to difficulties uh, all the time. And um, this is a natural state for you. The separateness and singular is not your natural state. Your natural state is unified, joined, and fully awakened in consciousness, knowing that anything you choose is just a thought intention away. All right. So Angel obviously is still working on some of our technology and not sure if everybody can still hear me. Maybe somebody can send a message in to say hello. Somebody here, Angel, is asking, uh, are you there? Hello, hello. There you are. Woo. Yes, here we are. I'm back. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, there's a few questions here, um, but, 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 but go ahead. I don't know what you were saying, but please, I don't want to interrupt you. Uh, I think that Stacy Savage had written in and was wondering if we were going to do class rentals again. We are not planning on doing the rental cycle anymore. So classes are purchable, purchasable, and they are yours for your download. And um, we are running some incredible specials on old classes. If you want to catch up on classes, climb on right now onto the website because Sue is putting them up like 20 and 30 classes at a time, and they're going away. So our old content is going away uh, permanently. And she's throwing these things up at crazy prices, crazy prices. So if you want to start tapping into some courses and classes, now's a great time to do that. Just go to the website, expandwithjulius.com, or you can write into support, Sue at support at expandwithjulius.com, and she'll uh, connect you with what we're running on sale on, on, those, on that old content for you. Excellent. Yes, let me let me catch up. So Deline says, I need to sign up. And also Mama Whale says, I want to sign up tool. And then Sony says, yes. And Lori says, I hear you. And Emma Freeman can hear you in Australia. Okay, wonderful. Great. Wonderful to have you in Australia as well. And here, expand with Julius. So if, please do join us for the workshop. If you have any questions, you can send an email to support at expandwithjulius.com. And, and let's put some basic information here. Yeah, everything is here. So you actually, if you scan, if you scan the April special pack, you will see, you will go to that page that they shared before for some reason. I don't know why I'm going to try again because I'm a very persistent person. I'm going to try again here. All right. So we can show again where after scanning this wonderful QR code, it takes you, it takes you here. It takes you here. Okay. Yeah. It takes you here. And we're going to show it again. All right. Here we are. And this is what you're going to see and everything that she was explaining. The last thing we we're trying to do is to play the video, but it didn't work out. But I'm sure that all the explanation that Casey made was enough to cheer up the audience. All right, everybody has shaken off the doubts of whether joining or not the level of consciousness expanded workshop, five part workshop, special for April. Okay, let's go back to our questions and conversations, okay, because we have lots of things going on. Yes, amazing sale. I'm taking the one about. Fear and phobias, Sony says. Great. Fear and phobias. Thank you so much. We look forward to having you on the workshop. And now, 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 now. Okay, so we have three questions pinned here. All right. Let's go to this question also from Sony, which is the following. All right. So Sony's question is, wow, thank you. This was the last question that he asked a few minutes ago. Julius, our amazing dog, Cashew. That's a nice name for a dog. I love cashews. Has pancreati pancreatitis. Pancreatitis. How can we help her heal? Can we use plasma for her? 
We love her beyond words can tell. Thank you infinitely. Well, if you're asking about a blood transfusion to bring plasma into our body, that could be. You could uh, work with a healer that is definitively successful with trans through their energy fields and their healing hands. Um, so the pancreatitis, of course, that your dog has is in the toxicities and more than likely the vaccines that your animal got, uh, that your canine got when it was young and, and brought in, you know, to the household and things like that. Unfortunately, those things get activated in their DNA and in their genetic, into their genetic field. Um, there is great homeopathic information. Uh, so homeopathy is really great. We encourage you to do some research on that for animals and pets. Um, and also we would um, suggest that you oxygenate the water that you are feeding the canine. Um, and you can look into how that is done as well. So oxygen can help eat away the pathogens that are causing the cancer. And so oxygen therapy will actually even have um, the dog sit in uh, an oxygen chamber if that's made available in your area, but oxygen therapy would be great. Excellent. Thank you so much. Julius, let's go to the next question from Marianne Geddes. It seems to be quite common now for babies to be born. What the medical profession are saying is tongue tied and, oh, requiring, yes. and mm -hmm. requiring a surgical intervention. Yes. Is there, is there a reason behind this? I had no idea, by the way. Yeah. Personally, yeah. I had no idea. So yeah. it, is there a reason it, behind this? It is. There is. It, it is. It is a they will tell you that is it can be in the gene pool. It can be genetic. Um, and that is a truth. Um, it is, um, you know, a, a kind of a dormant or, or latent gene uh, where that happens. So that's where the tongue is pinned down. So instead of being up with, with this little cord, the cord is up down. So they have to lift the tongue up and clip so the tongue can move in the mouth. So it's called tongue tied. And um, energetically, we will tell you, it is all about um, holding back your truth in other lifetimes, possibly being punished for speaking your truth. So you have literally created a, um, a speech impediment or, or a way to keep you subdued or to keep your truth. Um, there's a lot of cleft palates. There's also a lot of malformation of the roofs of the mouth. So instead of the roof of the mouth shaped, it, it dips in like a, like a number eight and the tongue gets kind of caught in there. So lots of speech impediment problems, lots of hair lips, lots of tongue tying. We're also going to tell you it has to do with vaccinations that the parents took. And if uh, the mother carrying the baby is undergoing a lot of stress. Okay. Hello, hello, here I are. am. There exactly. You are. Exactly, some issues with the, with the audio, but here we are, I was, I'm back. All right, so let's go to the next question, which is Mama Wales question. Hi, Angel, Casey and Julius, spring is coming and I'm wondering when is the ideal moon phase for planting and growing food, mm. Mama Wales? Mm. Well, we would say um, you want to plant before the full moon because the full moon is really going to activate the growth, really going to magnetically pull the growth from that plant. So if you watch the full moon cycles and you plant your seeds, uh, you know, a few weeks before that, or even just a few days before that, and the full moon will help root things or really start to get things going with the seeds. That's what we'll tell you. The moon is incredible, incredible magnetic pull between the earth ship and the moon. And it really helps to birth things like literally the coral reefs, reefs, across the world wait, the full moon causes them to reproduce. They do their reproductive cycle 
when there is a full moon. And we would say the full moon works the same way for the food and the, and the croppings uh, on the surface of the earth as well. So you want to make sure you're doing your planting cycle about three weeks before a full moon. Excellent. Thank you so much. Again, we have updated the QR code. So you have this wonderful information about the level of consciousness expanded workshop that we're going to have this special in the May, in the month of April. Thank you so much for everybody who has shown interest and we will keep on asking questions. The next question comes from, let me see, let me see, let me see. Sony is saying thank you. Mariam is saying thank you. And then Gnarly Beard Trouble, someone that had, I think I have never had or, or read uh, his or her name, is saying, is it possible to have a blocked throat chakra too? Absolutely. Absolutely. You can have body. Um, but um, the surgery that they are doing is pretty simple. It's pretty simple. You want to make sure that you have a really good uh, homeopathic doctor, a doctor who's very familiar with um, as least of an invasive procedure as possible. Some children do not have that procedure done and they just learn to speak around it because some people just don't want to have to, they don't want to cut anything. Depends on how severe, you know, the tongue tying is. But the problem is, is that if infants are tongue tied, they will have a very difficult time nursing, very difficult time nursing. And so they could not get enough nutrients or they will gulp in a whole lot of air and have just horrible, horrible, horrible issues with gas and bloating and things like that. So the, the, the tongue tied has a lot to do with being able to clasp and grasp on to suckle and to get nutrients. So that's usually why they will snip the tongue tie, tongue tie in an infant so it can eat and it can get it, its nutrients rather than waiting just to see if, if the child has a speech impediment. But it depends on how severe it is. All right. Thank you so much. Let's go to the next question by Ursula Baker. Missing seeing you and Brad presenting together. Will he join you on air again or in person retreats? No, he will not be joining me again. Brad and I are getting divorced. All right. Clister Creel. Thank you so much, Casey. Let's go to the next question. Emma Freeman, I would love to join, but I already, this is a question actually regarding the, the, uh, the workshop. I would love to join, but I already have a healing course booked for April. Do you do one every month? And then actually Sue was saying, hi, Emma, we generally have two live workshops at each month. They are also available in replay ongoing. I don't know if you would like to add anything else about this Emma's question, Casey. Keep a really great stock uh, through our website of all different ways for you to connect with us and Joyce's teachings. Everything from very simple, very inexpensive to very in-depth workshops, um, packages, uh, coaching packages, healing sessions. So we really want to try to connect with you in every way possible, please go to the website, scroll all the way through, see everything that we've got going on. We know that something will resonate with you. And when it resonates, Master, we are here for you. And thank you for being with us here. And we hope you enjoy the course that you have chosen for yourself. Please treat yourself, please honor yourself, and please love yourself by doing things to assist you on your conscious journey. Excellent. Thank you, Casey. Thank you, Julius. Manuel saying thank you so much, Casey and Julius and Angel too. You guys are the best. Thank you so much. We're just trying to do what we know can help and serve you every single day to expand the consciousness of humanity. Also, Sony is saying, I just want to add how fabulous, amazing Casey is. So fabulous, generous, powerful, unstoppable energy of life. Thank you. We couldn't agree more. All right. Okay. So Emma saying that would be great. This timing would be an issue. Okay. No problem. All right. And then you, and then Emma also says you have resonated with me for a long time. And Ursula is sending us a lovely purple love. And Emma says again, thank you. You know, we don't, we don't typically, you know, we don't spend 
enough time saying thank you and showing the gratitude from our audience. So today we're taking that time to do it. And then we have someone else with a question here. All right, so let's go to the, what was the previous question? Hold on a second, because there are so many documents, so many questions here, one second. All right, so the next question, if I'm not wrong, and if I have missed any, please let me know. The audience always tells me when I miss something. So this question comes from Learn or Learny George. And the question is, hi there, do you know if the JAPT are NPCs? Will they be ascending to or disappearing? Hmm. Thank you. Uh, so Master, your ascension has to do with your conscious journey. It is not something that's going to happen to you or for you. You do it by raising your consciousness. That's how it works. There isn't going to be a magical wand waved where some people are going to be able to join the club and others are not. You have been programmed with a savior program and you need a program. Okay. Anybody that works on their consciousness and raises their consciousness to a sixth level of consciousness will ascend themselves off of a physical plane. That's how it works. You have been all, you've been poisoned severely, severely poisoned. And some of those poisons are intended to block your pineal gland and your pituitary gland. There are ways to help unblock that. And you get to work on that as does everyone else. But it is not about any type of a savior program. It's not about the chosen few or the unchosen few. If you are a sovereign being and you are a sentient and you are a sentient that is working on its level of consciousness, you are ascending. You are working yourself through the levels of consciousness. That's what that teaching is going to be all about and well informing you of that procedure. We do not support anybody who believes that there's going to be some kind of a mothership landing, picking and choosing based on what somebody did or didn't do to themselves. Um, you are source. You are sovereignty, and it's all about you coming back to the memory of that truth. Awesome. Thank you so much. And again, we have to say thank you to everybody that has joined the channels, which are different from the ones that they typically watch our show. We know that we have one channel that has been closed temporarily, which is the Expansion Network channel on YouTube. But still, we are seeing that the numbers are going back up, which means that everybody is trying to look for another option, obviously, we have the Expand with Julius channel on YouTube, the Expand with Julius channel on uh, Facebook, and the, and the Expansion Network channel on Facebook as well. So thank you, everyone that has already noticed that we didn't have YouTube active today, but you still came here and learn. Learn George is saying thank you. Thank you, actually, because we also identified that you had asked the question offline. So we really appreciate you that you come on, came online and you asked the question that you had already sent to us before. We really appreciate you. And I think this is going to be the last question of the show from Stacy. And again, we still have a lot of questions uh, on the backlog here for the following weeks. But, you know, we are very happy to have a lot of questions because we can obviously keep on expanding the consciousness of humanity thanks to you and your questions. The question from Stacy Savage, as you see, is... I'm trying to align my beliefs around having a great memory to help me trust more in my own knowing. Great statement, Stacy. What does Julius recommend for tapping more into the pool of thought? You have to stop judging thought, Master. You judge thoughts. Everybody does. That's what low consciousness is. You have to push yourself into the unfamiliar. You have to push yourself into content. You have to push yourself into information and at the same time, not completely rely on that information, but use it to activate your curiosity, your adventurism and your truth. What you are looking for is information that has um, an infinite possibility to it, not limitation to it. So you're looking for high frequency information, but master, as you grow your frequency, you will transcend all thought into a high frequency field, but you need to get out of your own way. You need to get out of your familiar thoughts 
and push yourself beyond the boundaries of that which you already think about. That's what our courses and classes are all about. They get you bending your brain in different ways that you commonly have not done before, which assists you into opening up your field and to knowing yourself more now than ever as knowing yourself as source. Excellent. Thank you so much. And that was the last question of the show. Again, we, we were very, very happy today because obviously we had not seen you in a couple of weeks. That's not going to happen in the future. Remember from now on, every single week at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time US, we're going to be back here with your questions. I'm sure that having more shows will allow us also to go through the questions that haven't been answered yet. We have a long list of questions, but we are happy to prioritize every one of you who takes time out of your busy day and come here and ask questions. We appreciate, obviously, all the comments that you make. We are here for you. We really love you and we really like to answer and to have those questions answered by Julius and his group of entities channeled by Casey Joe. Anything else you would like to add, Casey? Just want to continue to extend my gratitude to everybody and to you, Angel, of course. Thank you all for your support and your enthusiasm and your understandings as we continue to make changes into this year. We truly are blessed and honored to have had those of you who have been with us for a while. Having been with us for a while, we send you nothing but love and an extraordinary life. Okay, thank you, absolutely. Thank you so much. And, if, and last, a last reminder, there's a QR code, excuse me, on that side, there's a QR code there. So feel free to use that QR code, QR code to know exactly what's going to happen during the month of April, which is going to be amazing, this five-part you know, workshop. All right, so lovely. Antolin says thank you. And Stacey Savage, so much fun. Love to all. Absolutely. We try to make it fun. As you know, we are very, very fun, related people. We like to have fun and now right now we're gonna show we're gonna project we're gonna stream the outro video again thank you so much see you next week if i count it well it's gonna be the 4th of april that we're gonna have the following show 2024 from this mother earthship and we have so many nice comments Lori haley saying thank you love you all and mary ann get is saying that she loves us, we love you back, okay? So now we have to go, thank you, see you next week. Wonderful to have you here, I'm sure that you have enjoyed our conversation as much as we have. Love you, see you soon.